So in today's video we're going to talk about network storage. So this is like um, external hard drives that are network accessible. Um, some people call them cloud storage but again cloud storage is something that you have on a cloud server provided by another provider. Uh, these little boxes are something that you put hard drives in or they come with hard drives if you were if you've not got your own or you don't want to choose a bit more flexibility and essentially they're like a server a really small server so you can have user accounts on there you can have share services all sorts of different access you know mobile phone app access internet access via a web browser or FTP and things like that. So it acts like a little mini server to the hard drive you put in there. It hangs off of the back of your network. They've got a one gigabit connection on there. So as long as you've got gigabit LAN in your house and um, in your office sort of thing and your computer's a gigabit, it's gonna to talk to it dead quick. And also it can then communicate outside of your router and network so you can access it remotely. So for that kind of thing, these are fantastic. Loads of different people make them. But um, more recently in the job that I do, I'm finding the best people out there are Synology. And specifically, the model that I'm finding is fantastic is the DS216J. Basically because you can either buy it pre-configured, so it comes with its own WD Red drives, or you can also buy it without any drives, just the unit itself. So you just buy your own drives and put those in there. And they can be configured in different ways, but we'll get to that in a little bit. For now, I'm going to take this out of the box and then we're going to fit the two drives that I've got in there. So the maximum size drives you can put in here are, well, two eight terabyte drives. So the maximum it can handle is 16 terabytes. It's a very small, compact little unit. And without any drives in there, it really does weigh absolutely nothing. In the box, we've got a quick installation guide and then power brick and power cable and it also comes with a network cable as well and all the screws so you can mount your drive so we've got our two drives there they're standard three and a half inch um, SATA drives um, I'm not going to run them in um, any normal configuration that you might consider where it's RAID and they're mirrored um, I'm going to run them in JBOD mode, just a bunch of disks, JBOD mode. Um, and that way, um, I'm going to use this as a backup to my other drive. Here's one I bought earlier, uh, which is going to be added to my array drives. Um, so these two will then make four of these. So this is uh, an eight terabyte RAID. So this one's got two eight terabyte RAID. Uh, WD Reds in there, Western Digital Red Drives in there. So that's going to give me uh, eight terabytes of storage because I'm going to run it in mirrored RAID array. Um, and then I'm going to use this one as a backup to this drive. So this is going to be my main stuff. Uh, this is going to go along with the other two upstairs. And then this one I'm just going to use as a backup drive for everything else. So this is just going to contain all the changes I make every day because the drives themselves are mirrored and they are obviously, well, that's, you know, not ten feet and touch a bit of wood, but they're reliable enough anyway that they should give me at least four or five years of data storage without any problems. But the problem with so much data is where to back it up. So that really, they, unless you've got like a massively stupid sort of uh, fiber connection going outside the world to back up your eight terabyte or I think I've got over 40 terabytes now of storage. It's just not possible to do that every day. It's probably not possible to do it once and then do a differential backup every day either. So the beauty about having this here with some drives I've had lying around is that I can use this as my differential daily backup. Um, I'll also do a, a monthly backup of all the other big stuff as well. Um, and then the other drives I've got are just kind of archive drives anyway. So this is gonna be the important stuff the stuff that I work on every day and the stuff that I need and I need the versioning more importantly of all those different versions that the backup gives me. That then opens and then obviously you can see in there that we've got two bays that the drives just basically slot into. So the two bays in there are both SATA bays and the drive will just slot into there and then using the screws that we've got here, just secure them in there. So let's get a screwdriver. So what we're gonna do now is just pop these little screws in. And 
and that way that's the drive then secured on this side at least anyway and then turn it around the other side and do exactly the same on that side so that's it there nice and secure on that side I'm just going to flip it round there's the fan on the back you've got your network port which is like I say it's a gigabit connection on there so that's that easy uh, two USB 3 ports which support other services like printers and external drives as well so you can also get a USB drive and plug them in which is how I used to use this uh, I had um, an external USB array um, and had the two drives in there it's just that I need some extra functions and the array just really wasn't kind of that reliable the power kept going on it so that's that one there little uh, lock connector so Kensington kind of style lock so you can lock it down somewhere uh, logic, the logic board's all inside there, the little power cables and everything else and then around the front we've just got the lights and that kind of thing so we then get the lid back on find its little slidey place slide along so use those different screws for the case so that's it done then really that's our drive all done with five terabytes of uh, drives in there uh, to which I'm just going to use as um, uh, just a bunch of drives array JBOD again and um, who comes up with this stuff just a bunch of drives JBOD imagine if everything was just acronym the way that it was just said so rather than being a Phillips screwdriver it's crosshead crosshead screwdriver CHS we got a CHS just wouldn't know would you anyhow so that's us done with that one that was um, probably I'd say the easy part about this really and um, putting the drives in there is all done and that makes it obviously a nice unit now and then basically we're just going to add it to the network now and then the rest of the setup is all basically online so we're just going to go through now on the web um, interface that it comes with um, if any of you don't know um, it should be explained in the book if you've already got one of these already um, it's either going to be on DHCP if you've got just a standard LAN network or maybe you've set it up so that you can have it on a static IP uh, but the basic port is port 5000 so say for example it's going to be um, you know, 192.168.1.70 um, it'll be port 5000 after that um, so you can actually go to disk station colon 5000 um, or alternatively find.synology.com um, and it should find this across your LAN uh, just in case you don't know what it is other than that a good network scanning tool will help you find it that way it'll identify itself anyway right then so let's get over to the PC and um, let's just see how we can get this all set up as a bunch of disks and get it set up as a backup drive so looking at your router or using a little um, network scanning utility you can easily find the uh, Synology system and then for connect to it just remember that through the browser window it's the IP address and it's on port 5000 for the standard and when you log in you're going to see this page whether it's one that you've installed drives on yourself or it's come pre-configured in the box with some WD reds or whatever and you're still going to get the same setup page so you click on setup um, it doesn't come with anything installed which is all very strange uh, you click install now um, it then tells you that it's going to delete everything that's on the hard drive that's already in there or hard drives so you have to agree to that click OK and then this goes through like it says it takes approximately 10 minutes um, on average you know sometimes it's even less than that um, but the strangest thing about it is that once it goes through this process you're kind of not done yet so a little bit annoying but um, if there are updates to do just like Windows you've got a brand new computer you've got to run the updates uh, Synology is just the same so it's going to run this system uh, it says it's downloading like it must be downloading the software but for some reason when it's downloading the software it's not downloading the very latest so as you get going and you install the system once you've logged in again it's going to basically want to update or at least it did um, on the one I did uh, just a few minutes ago when I did uh, the installation of my own drives inside the system and um, it's a little bit frustrating but as it says there um, it takes 10 minutes uh, once you are ready you'll be presented with a login screen 
um, and basically it's just going to say you can use the name admin and leave the password blank. So it's done the installation of the basic software and now it's restarting your disk station uh, with a countdown. Um, the worst part is that nothing click anywhere on there. You can't really force that to happen any faster, which is a bit unfortunate, but there we go. So we just have to wait nine minutes. Okay, so we've restarted and now it's time to choose the server name, username, password, and obviously it's gonna take your password strength and whether you want to um, give free information for Synology to fix things if they see it going wrong on your system. Uh, share network location um, so that they can find it easier and things like that. Um, so the first thing to do is obviously work through um, a name for this one. So um, come up with whatever you want. This is what it's basically going to be known. Um, it's not how you find it across the internet, um, but it's going to be something that's broadcast across your local uh, network so the computers can see it and things like that. I do recommend that you set up um, a quick ID, quick connect ID and a Synology account because um, it just works far better than with your remote access and remote apps and things like that. So this is going to log you in your account and check to make sure that the chosen name that you uh, wanted is there and obviously then it's going to confirm yes you can now access it using this following address. Click next. It's then going to ask you what software do you want to install on it. So again, going back to all the other packages that are available, you can install whatever you want. Um, so it's going to put those as a default installation, uh, but I don't need all them. So I'm just going to skip that step. Um, anonymous stats, uh, it's entirely up to you, but I'm going to say no to that one. And that's it. Uh, again, top left there is where all your apps are stored. I uh, don't want the help section, but it's up to you if you want that to uh, be shown every time you log in. And here are all the apps. So again, the only two real things I like to have on there is the resource monitor and the storage manager. Um, these little uh, numbers there are like apps on your mobile. It tells you when there's something there and correspondingly it comes over there. And this is a bit, again, you know, we've just spoke about the fact that it's installed the software. We've watched it. And now there's a new version all of a sudden. So let's go ahead and download that and update it. Yes, let's continue. And obviously it's going to update and then restart and go through the whole process again. So to make sure that I don't make this video like 10 hours long, uh, I'm just going to split it up into different sections. So that's basically part one of the Synology um, video all finished. Um, you are now just basically uh, ready to go on your system. If you've got an out of the box system, you can play with it. And if you've built your own sort of drive array and everything inside it, then part two is going to be how to set up that drive and its um, array. And then I'm going to do a part three, which is all about the extra options, uh, the apps and all the extra services and everything else that the Synology drive can do. So thanks very much for watching part one and uh, keep an eye out for part two and three very soon. So thanks for watching my video today. I hope you find it really useful. Uh, down in the description below, you'll find some affiliate links to companies that I am affiliate for. And if you buy any products from them, I get a tiny margin on that. So for all you people out there that say, thanks John, I watched your video and it really helped me or very informative, whatever, then by clicking on those links down there to the affiliates and buying from those providers, and I have teamed up quite kind of carefully with the people that I wanted to. So I think that most of the people that watch this video will find something via those affiliate links. And uh, like I say, every time that you sign up to an affiliate um, piece of product or subscription, I get a little bit that helps me uh, produce these videos. So thanks very much for watching this video on the Synology NAS drive. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you did. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't or for whatever reason. Uh, please also leave a comment, get in touch. In the description down below you'll find how to get in touch with me or if you want to leave a comment down below if you've got a problem setting one of these up, I'll try and reply. If not, other people might reply as well, help you out. Uh, it would help me out, speaking of that, if you hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so really is very helpful thanks very much 
and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Thanks. Bye.